new 30-year-old project boat came with a Nissan NS70 outboard that did not run. I wanted to pull off the lower unit and check a few things, so I needed to drain the drive lube and then remove the lower unit, the propeller, the drive shaft, and the transmission. Normally this is not that difficult. You just open the drain screws and drain the oil into a pan. The top one is a vent. It's also used to gauge when you're refilling from the bottom uh, how much oil is in there and then the bottom one is just the drain screw. This one was seized up and had been left in the water for quite some time. I tried a variety of different ways to get the drain plug out but as you can see it wasn't going to cooperate. You can also notice from the bottom of the skeg that it's all eaten away by the salt and corrosion and it had been repainted at some point but this engine has spent a lot of its life in salt water which led to a problem. Since the screw was seized up the first thing I tried was to put some heat on it which a lot of times will work. My preference is MAP gas because it's hotter than propane so I just used that and put some heat on there but nothing seemed to work. The top vent screw came out with no problem. The bottom one was a different oh. story. What do you know? Over the course of the next four to five hours, I used pretty much every tool that I had and everything I could think of to try to get that bottom screw out. I used different types of screwdrivers. I sprayed it with PB Blaster. I put heat on it. I tried drilling a hole in the center and putting in an easy out. I broke the easy out. I had to use vice grips to remove the old easy out. These were from Sears, by the way, and I can't really return them. Then I switched to um, something different from a tap and die set to a variety of different tools. I went through two different drills and four batteries. I found out that all of the drill bits that I own are dull and are incapable of drilling a hole in an aluminum screw. And then uh, finally, I came upon the idea to do it the way I usually do things, which is just brute force. I don't know if I mentioned that we're going through a heat wave and with the heat index it's about 108 degrees. It's always really really hot when I work on the boat down here in southwest Florida. Finally after using about every tool in the garage I finally struck oil. I lowered the unit down hydraulically and let it drain into the pan and then I also removed that top screw to let some air flow through and it will drain faster that way. Naturally, as I unscrewed the top drain screw, it fell into the pan of oil, but that's just kind of how it goes around here. As the oil drained out and it started to settle some, I could see that there was some water contamination in it, so who knows when the last time it was changed was. After I got all the oil drained out of the lower unit, it was time to separate it and bring it into the garage to see if I could take a look at the inside of it. I used these ratcheting tie-down straps to hold the two pieces together and then once I removed the bolts I thought the lower unit would pull off. It turns out that this linkage, which is the shift linkage, has to be disconnected first and you have to drift out the little roll pin. Of course it's much easier to pull the pin out if you have pliers where the tips actually touch. So um, I didn't have that. I was able to drift out the pin with an awl and a hammer and then I was able to grab them and uh, and pull it out. Also, um, this top drain screw, the vent, is in good shape and there's also one that says wash which is used if you're going to rinse out the outdrive. The bottom looks like I shot it with a 50 cal. That's where I had to drill everything out and I was going to take it up to a shop to see if they could put a helicoil or something in it and after some thought I decided it was probably going to be best to see if I could find a new lower unit for this 30 year old motor that's no longer made. I actually found one on eBay for $99, unbelievably. There's also a zinc anode in the back which appeared to be in pretty good shape and it's offset and those little markings are to help correct steering. This is the awl I used. I just tapped it with a hammer and it actually pushed that little roll pin right out. Uh, I didn't see it at first but then when I lifted up the shifter and put it in, I guess it was forward, it kind of exposed itself 
and I was able to pull it out with a pair of pliers that actually did touch. Once that was disconnected, I loosened up the ratcheting tie-down straps that held the two halves of the outdrive together, and then, unbelievably, it actually came apart. This is my first time taking one apart, so I guess this is probably old hat to people that work on motors, but I was learning as I went along. I also downloaded a manual off the internet. I put the lower unit on a little work area in the garage, and I had air conditioning, so it was a little bit more tolerable. The drive shaft runs down into the water pump, and inside of this box is the impeller. That runs off of the drive shaft, which has a spline on the end of it, and goes into the bottom of the motor. Uh, 13 millimeter bolts, there's four of them. This is the shift linkage and currently it is in reverse. When it's lifted all the way up, it's forward and then right in the middle there's a detent and that is neutral. Let's see if I can get this cover off. Maybe it'll come off. There we go. Now there's a little like a woodruff key right here. Don't want to lose that. That way. If I lay them out, this is the way they came out with this little ear on top. There's a little key you don't want to lose. And then the water pump looks pretty good, or the impeller. I did a little research and I was actually able to find a new one for about $20. Nissan was made by Tohatsu, and they went out of business a few years ago, but they are still like the second largest Japanese manufacturer of outboards, so a lot of the parts are available. You just have to pay dearly for them. After looking at all the corrosion and also the hole, I decided that I was just going to replace that lower unit. I found a user's manual that was free, but I actually paid to download a repair manual, um, which kind of gave me some more insight. Some of the parts were just about to break, and of course I broke them as I was trying to get things apart, but it was very helpful in finding out actually how to disassemble this thing. The prop was pretty easy to take off, and I just used a little bit of PB Blaster to loosen things up. Also that gasket on top of where the water pump impeller is um, that came off easily but that box had to come off and um, I unbolted everything that I could and let everything soak with some penetrating oil and then just waited a day before I started working. There was one little bolt that I took out that held like a little retainer piece that kept the drive shaft linkage in place. That was also kind of stuck and I had to spray that with penetrating oil and work on it some. As I was taking everything off of that lower unit there was like a plastic screen that went over top of the water intake and I took that apart but the lower unit that I got to replace it actually doesn't have that. There were several different series that will fit and the manufacturer told me that the one I have would fit just fine. Next I pulled out the cotter pin and was going to take the prop nut off but I was using those same pliers that don't actually touch so it was difficult. If I ever get to a thousand subscribers and actually get paid for doing any of these videos the first thing I'm going to buy is a new pair of needle nose pliers that touch. At this point everything was going pretty smoothly and I was able to get the propeller off and then try to pull apart any parts out of that lower unit that I could. Next I had to pull out the prop shaft bearing and there is a tool theoretically um, but it's not what I was using. <laughs> I ended up using 
pretty much everything I had in a Rube Goldberg type of contraption. And after a little more beating on it with a hammer, uh, on the, since I wasn't going to use the lower unit anymore, I was able to finally get things apart. This is a shot of my OR and all the different tools I had to use to get this bearing out. I'll know in the future um, to get the tool, but since this is probably going to be a one-time deal, I didn't want to spend $100 or more on a tool that I'm going to use one time. This is my modified gear puller that had a chain on it and a strap on one end, and this is that bearing that was the bane of my existence I was able to get out. I'm going to soak everything in some mineral spirits and get everything nice and clean obviously before I attempt to reinstall anything but it took forever to get that thing out it was seized up once I got the bearing out there was another surprise I got the prop shaft out and I went to try to take out the drive shaft where it connects in the top and I realized that there is a beveled gear in there this bevel gear needs a special tool, of course, in order to remove it. This is the prop shaft, and that's the reverse gear. And then there's the forward gear that slides back and forth. And you can see kind of how the transmission works. And it has beveled grooves cut in it, and that's what engages with that bevel gear that's on the drive shaft that's still inside the lower unit. Next I needed to pry off that housing that sits on top where the impeller is. So there are actually two little recessed areas where you can put a screwdriver on either side of it and I sprayed that with some penetrating oil and loosened it a little bit on one side then flipped it over and loosened it on the other and then after working with it a little bit it finally came out. After looking to make sure there was nothing else I needed to replace, I put it into the pan with all the other stuff that's going to get soaked in mineral spirits to clean it. The next thing I had to get out was that bushing or whatever that holds the shift linkage. The manual said that it was just pushed into place, so after spraying it with some PB blaster and fiddling with it a little bit, I was actually able to get that out too. It surprised me when it actually popped out of place because that's the first thing that actually just came apart like it's supposed to. There is a little black uh, O-ring that's on there that looked to be in good shape as well. I don't think I need to replace it, but I do have a big assortment of O-rings I got at Harbor Freight that I've had for years. The bottom of the drive shaft has a bevel gear with a nut on the bottom, and you need a bevel gear nut removal wrench. It's $100. I found it on eBay, so of course I had to buy that because I really enjoy collecting tools that I'll never use again. I decided to bite the bullet and looked up the part number for the wrench that I would need to buy. I did some research online and I did find it. It was new old stock and it is the Nissan Tohatsu gear bevel nut wrench. So I bought it, everything matched up, and you can see it's very old, and it's very well made. It um, looks like a bar with a piece of a socket welded onto it, which I could have probably made, and in retrospect I probably should have made. Anyway, I went to go put it on to remove that nut, and it doesn't fit. It's not the right size, it's way too small. You know the old saying, the more things change, the more they stay the same? A 7 8 Craftsman wrench fit it perfectly. It was already in my toolbox along with the vice grips that I used to hold the drive shaft instead of the special drive shaft holding tool that was another $80. So I guess I've learned something. Anyway, it all came out and I finally was able to disassemble everything totally. Here's a shot of that bevel gear that I couldn't get out. That's everything. Everything is out of the lower unit, and I go to install the new one, and guess what? It doesn't fit. 
I went online and I found a new lower unit that does fit. It already had all of the internal parts in it, so this was a good hands-on learning experience for me. As soon as I receive the new lower unit, I'll show you how I install it and reconnect all the linkage. And with any luck, I can get the engine started and we can move on to the next phase of the project. That's going to consist of taking everything off of the deck, replacing the flooring, the electrical system, the lighting, and the furniture, and maybe making a tiki bar.